Hi, my name is Brandon, and I'm the founder and arranger of On Brand Music. And today we're going to walk through an arrangement I did of On My Mama for the Florida A&M University Marching 100. So looking at the arrangement, I wanted to first, of course, tackle that intro. Uh, she has a nice little bass and guitar thing that they have going on. So this tuba comes in with the bum 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 bum. I have the tubas on the bass part, of course. And then to replicate that guitar, that wah-wah with the guitar, what I did was I had the soprano voices on that. So you have uh, piccolos, clarinets, and trumpets, as well as that sound being supported by the baritones. Now I put the baritones on there not only to help push and project and to help that melody cut through, but it's the closest to that guitar sound, whatever filters they have on the original record, that baritone kind of helps uh, give that sort of texture and timbre of the original record. So that's why I decided to put the baritones on that part. And we'll play a little bit of it real quick just so you can kind of hear what I did. Okay, great. So that's how I did that. So now we're going to move on to that first verse. Uh, I went back and forth about how I was going to voice this. Um, you know, the tenor voices, of course, I knew I wanted those trombones and the baritones and tenor saxes uh, on the on the melody um, because it's the closest. She's kind of sing, singing in that tenor register when the first verse comes in. Um, but I was going back and forth about whether or not I wanted to have harmonies in here because there is a, a synthesizer that plays uh, throughout. And I decided to leave that out just because of the fact that when the band plays, I kind of wanted to give the... Um, listener and the audience a different experience for when the following section comes in, right? So I'm thinking backwards so that it's a little bit more dramatic when we get to bar nine and the trumpets come back in with that next section of the verse. When I move over to bar nine, um, we have here the uh, trumpets, uh, the clarinets, piccolos, they're now playing in the upper register, playing and taking over the melody. What happens here is now I reintroduce the harmony in the trombones as well as the horns. But then I started implementing uh, some of the things that I saw in the second half of this hook on the original record. Because usually the second time around when an artist does something, the producer and the artist, they introduce more musical information, musical element, elements. So within that second time that she sings it, uh, you have more harmonies and then you also are introduced to this line where it sounds like a flugelhorn. There's some things that she's doing with the background vocals and the horns and I wanted to implement that in this part. So I cut to that part. Now, uh, I'll play it really quick so that you can hear it. I'll start at bar eight so that you can hear that. Okay, we'll start right there. So you can kind of hear the things that I did. Now, in all honesty, as an arranger, you know, you go back and forth and you look at your arrangements and you're like, oh, I wish I would have done this differently or I could have tried that. And one of the things that I know that had I gone back in time and rewritten this, what I probably would have done here at bar nine is there's a part where I have just the horns and the altos da, 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 and uh, had the baritone support the first half of that phrase. So the baritones would have done ba, 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 ba. And then the horns and altos will come in on the ba ba boom. So ba 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 boom. That's one of the things that I probably would have done a little bit differently. Just kind of help that part project a little bit more, um, because it is in the lower side of the horn and alto range. But you know, uh, you live and you learn. Um, so when we get to the hook, again, I wanted to keep this closer to what is on the actual record, which is there are three main parts going. You have the tubas. You have the on the bass line, you have the melody that's going on, which is replicating her lead vocal. Then there's this one synth part that I gave to the trombones, baritones, and tenor saxes, and everyone else is playing that melody. And what I did was I had the altos and horns supporting the trumpets, uh, mainly because uh, they're naturally playing with more intensity in that upper register, right? Because they're more at the top of their op optimal range, and the trumpets are more in their middle range. So just to kind of give some. Uh, some meat to that part in that register. I, I decided to have the horns and I also support the trumpets, clarinets, and piccolos on that in that register. Piccolos and clarinets are still playing in the upper octave, you know, to kind of help that sound carry, but more so for the intensity and add a little bit more meat on those parts. I gave the horns and altos that part to support the trumpets. So 
now we'll just take a quick listen to that so you can see what I did there. <laughs> That's when I introduced a little bit more harmony uh, and then also added a counter melody, which is based on some of her background vocals that she does in the second hook. Now, this part, when we get to the horn section where the horns are featured, um, I decided to do this unison uh, because, again, I want to reset the listener experience. And then this is a section where you really demonstrate the power of the band, which, you know, there's no bigger sound than a unison sound. So I really wanted to kind of reset everybody's listening and just kind of take the audience by surprise and just give the band an opportunity to really demonstrate their unison and full power. Okay, so we'll take a quick listen to that. So again, uh, use the unison first and then you break off to the harmonies, implement some of the background vocals that she does in the song, just to again, kind of give the, keep the listener engaged and keep the band uh, switching it up a little bit to keep everybody listening. Uh, here's another thing that I did harmonically before we go into the section where the band is just chanting, I did another substitution where instead of just going to five like I had been doing, I went to a flat five, which is another, uh, another common you know, substitution, harmonic substitution technique. Um, so I built a chord off of that, what is a C flat, or it would technically be a C flat of B. Um, so yeah, I think I did. Technically it's like a C sharp 9 over B. Um, so I just used that instead of just going to a regular 5, just to again kind of catch the listener off guard and have them reset their ears. So the next section again, we talked about either them using it for the stanza or the third quarter. Just have them have the opportunity to just chant the song because that's the hook. Everybody knows it. Um, it's been made popular. It started off with Charlie Boy back in the day, and then Victoria kind of came back and flipped it. And I knew this part was a part that everybody would want to sing, uh, including the band members. So I kind of give the horns uh, uh, an opportunity to kind of rest their chops and also chant and get the crowd engaged while having the tubas play the bass line. Now, there's one thing, again, if there was a modification I would have made, it would have been to kind of tweak the bass line a little bit, not because it's a bad line, you know, it's a really iconic and, and signature line especially for this song. But I know that this particular tuba section, uh, the sousaphones, they like to be stretched uh, musically and like to play a lot of different things rhythmically and just kind of give them something a little bit more interesting uh, uh, to play, to uh, challenge their musicianship and just make it a little bit more fun for them because nobody wants to play the same thing over and over and over again. Just like, you know, trombones, they want to play whole notes and half notes of the whole song. You know, they want to have some movement. The tubas want to play some interesting things too beyond what's given in the original record. Um, so again, the way that I approached this was, you know, I definitely wanted an intro that had a lot of power. Uh, I wanted to format it for fast learning so that they could memorize it really quickly, which is why a lot of the sections are starting off in unison and they'll flip to like a harmonic section and then it kind of goes back to mostly unison and back to mostly harmony so that the musicians, as they're learning the music, can kind of know what to expect. Uh, and that helps with their memorization. And then you know, um, highlighting the most important and the key parts of the song, which I think, you know, they did a good job of replicating, you know, and I was just really intentional about. So I hope that you enjoyed this walkthrough. I am going to tag Marshall 100 Paparazzi, shout out to them, uh, with the video to the full performance of this song, the Florida Classic uh, 2023. As always, like, share, and subscribe to this video. And until next time, be well.